and we are back. It is 2022. Happy New Year, everybody. Welcome back to another episode of Talking Shop with Zyber. I am Waldo, always joined by my amazing co-host, Leonardo. How you doing, bro? I'm doing really well, man. Awesome. It's awesome to be back. Yeah, it is. Uh, we're slightly delayed this week, but um, you know, we, you guys might notice we got a little bit of a different setup. Um, we got the uh, approval to be able to uh, just get things a little bit more casual. And now that we can get over these COVID like restrictions and all these things, you know, uh, we thought why not make it a little bit more homely in here. So you guys will see we've got a few fake plants and a, <laughs> and a neon sign and the, the wall is still blue. So uh, those things haven't changed. We're, yeah, we're, we're sitting down. It's nice. It's comfortable. Are you saying we got budget for couches? Is that what we got? Is that, is that what happened? Oh, yeah. No, I think I, didn't I pick these up from the side of the road? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's how they've made it here. We're trying to make it look like yeah, a classy yeah, no, studio. Absolutely. So yeah. you mentioned delayed. We were delayed. Why were we delayed for a week while though? Yeah, we were supposed to start recording last week, guys. And uh, well, I got COVID. Yeah. So I've been there, done that, got the T-shirt and got a negative rat test on Tuesday. So that's why we're back in the office here. Good to go. I mean, everyone's going to have it soon. What are we at now? Like 30,000 cases or something, something per day? Like I, I like to rewind because uh, you were in the office one day. And then the, the, that day you called me and you said, hey, man, you know, I feel a bit funny, like a little bit of a scratchy throat. I think it's nothing. Don't worry about it. I'll, I might go get a test. Yeah. I come in the next day and sit down to the guy that you sit next to. Yeah. And then you call me and you go, hey, man, I got a positive. And I'm like, oh. So then I go away and isolate mm. for four, I think it was four days, three nights mm. in the master bedroom, not allowed out, yeah. can't do anything. Wife just locked me away. And then you call me and you say that you got a rat test and that was negative. Yeah, well, there's a little bit more to that story because on the Thursday when I was in the office here with David, um, who you guys will, by the way, see on some of the episodes this season, we look forward to introducing you to him. Um, we were sitting here and my flatmate was quite sick on the day anyway. And so I didn't know whether it was hay fever, what it was, but, you know, hypochondria takes over with these sorts of things. And um, I never thought I was a hypochondriac, but I clearly am. Because, yeah, that whole afternoon, ever since I f found out that morning that she's super sick, um, I just felt weird. Anyway, later on that afternoon, it got worse and I didn't even say anything to him. I just got up, packed my stuff up and just left, called you, said, hey, I'm going home, I work from home. Anyway, long story short, the next morning, I decided it would be prudent just to stay home anyway. And um, yeah, about midday, she opens up the, her, her door and uh, knocks on mine and goes, my best mate, who was here having pizza with us on Tuesday night, <laughs> just got tested positive. And that was three days prior to that. So uh, yeah, obviously we spent the rest of the Friday afternoon running around trying to get a COVID PCR test. Rat yeah. tests weren't approved yet yeah. for everyone then. Yeah. Long story short, got the PCR test, still waiting for the result. It's like one and a half weeks later now, more mm -hmm. than one and a half weeks later. Yeah. But I've had two rat tests and COVID in the middle of those. So I don't believe in those rat tests either, to be honest with you. They, they, <laughs> so they say that some of them could be faulty, could be. Yeah. Uh, but we're missing the point of my story here, Waldo. Oh, that's why we're delayed. Because you, well, no, not really. I had to spend three, four days oh, yeah, locked up right. in a room oh, when I didn't right. have to because, well, maybe I did have to because, but yeah, it came back. Uh, my test never came back, by the way. I think it took eight days for the result to come back. But in the meantime, you're texting me like, I'm negative now. Oh, I might have it. Yeah. And anyway, it was, it was I think fun. it's a bit of that going around. I think I did also message you saying, shit, that's a bit OTT, isn't it? Well, <laughs> yeah, I know. But then again, but you true, you got a little kid in the house. I got I got three nights of not having to do any babysitting. And uh, I watched a, I watched like four movies, which I barely ever do. I nice. watch like a movie once a month. So I got to watch like four movies in, in two, three nights. So, you know, I guess, you gave me a little mini holiday, so thank you. No, no worries. I know you were working quite a bit through then as well and probably just losing a lot of money buying NFTs. I did. <laughs> <laughs> I should stop telling you about my <laughs> NFT journey. But it's amazing. Guy. All right, anyway. Yeah, so look. Well, you're, you're here, you're healthy, we are. that's what's important. Exactly. And um, look, we're kicking straight into another season of this. It's a new year. There's so many things planned for this season, guys. But ever since we did our last episode, which was with Kurt um, from... Uh, Kurt Elster from... <laughs> like, oh, Ether, Cycle, Ether Cycle. Ether Cycle. The unofficial Shopify podcast. I <laughs> really love that. We got some amazing feedback from that. Um, Tech nasty. <laughs> you did that so well. It's, I thought he had the machine. <laughs> and I was like, whoa, has Rachel got... <laughs> We do have we do have buttons that we can push and yeah, sound absolutely. effects that come through. But that was a great episode, a yep. lot of feedback. Yep. Uh, that was amazing. That was our fiftieth episode. Yep. 
meaning today is our 51st. Yep. Uh, and we do have a lot of awesome people coming on this season. Yep. And, you know, it was really awesome because we we're going to introduce Rachel, who is our, you know, um, production manager for this podcast. What do you call them? Yeah. Studio just, manager. That's it. Uh, and uh, you were meant to bring a mic for her because your mic's still at home and now we can't introduce her. So hi, Rachel. Yeah. Can you like yell? Maybe the there you go. <laughs> They're probably not going to hear that. But um, hey, guys, you will be seeing Rachel on some of the episodes this season. Um, she is the master behind everything that you guys see here, um, organizes all the chats with our, with the, our customers, our, you know, with our, uh, what are they called? Cool? They're called cl- uh, clients. Guests. They're called guests. <laughs> it's definitely been four months since we've been here and doing this, that's for sure. And I'm actually so used to doing it from home now as well. Like, it feels a bit weird sitting in a room. I think with it's you. nice. Just the audio is good, yeah, the nice. visual is good. But, uh, you probably don't know because Rachel knows this answer, but mm. Rachel, who we got coming on the show? Can you give us some names? Oh, she's. Uh, I did grab that. So we got, you a got few. it. Oh, you're, yeah, yeah, you're yeah. prepared. We, I'm not. We put out a bit of a survey to our Shopify Facebook group uh, in New Zealand. Now, obviously, those of you who aren't in New Zealand won't be part of that, but uh, we welcome you guys to leave reviews and comments down the bottom of this um, episode to let us know what it is that you guys want to listen to. Some of the feedback that we got from you guys from last year was that you want to see more merchants on here. You want to see more more people in the partner network, different cool apps, um, and talking about just, yeah, what we're best at, which is e-com and conversion rate. Was right? there anything there about Leo talking about his NFTs? Uh, no, there's no NFTs on this season of, uh, no, oh, I'm kidding, I'm shit, kidding, I'm, I'm kidding, I'm kidding. I'm, kidding. No. I'm kidding. Look, speaking of NFTs, let's just, let's just get that little elephant out of the room <laughs> here. Um, you know, we were pretty big on it last year. We started delving in. I think the whole world in the sort of last six months of last year was like, oh, NFTs, NFTs, and then- People killed it. Like all mean? these influencers have gone out there and they've started these NFT projects and no, like there's a lot of money being lost and there's a lot of snaky things happening yes. behind the scenes. So for those of you, I want to say this, that listened to us, Leo, last year, um, talking about NFTs, getting involved in it, just be careful, okay? Make sure you do your research and- um, you're very wise. What do they always say? This is a non-financial advice, non-financial exactly. advice. Um, but I'm going to say this. Yeah. NFTs, the token, what you can the do with them for, for, for brands mm. are getting smarter and smarter. Yeah. These NFTs have utilities, meaning they can do something, mm. you know, and that, that whatever that do something is, is just open to <laughs> the what world of what's going to come. Because I do believe... They are, you know, the future of, of some areas for some brands. Some Nike's getting in there, you know, Adidas is in there. Um, you know, oh, yeah, Ape Yacht Club, Board Ape Yacht Club, sorry. Yeah, yeah. Like I think that's going to become like a fashion brand, you know, and you, everyone's going to be seeing in like two years' time be like, where did that come from? But mm. what I'm trying to say is as people get smarter, utilities are going to get a lot better with these NFTs and brands are going to be onto it and – can provide something to their real unique followers that love them and create this amazing community around these NFTs, whatever it is, whatever it is they can do, you know, an NFT that you show up, they scan it, it lets you have a season pass of the all black games. I don't know. You can do anything you want with these things. And I am very passionate when it's digital and you can sell it. Because it takes away logistics, yeah. it takes away pick and pack, it takes away all these other headaches that we have with e-commerce and that's why we love you know, talking about solutions for, for those areas. So that's why I get really passionate around NFTs. But anyway, I'll leave it there. No, 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 look, I know, and I 100% agree with you, but there's just, man, just the amount of stuff that I've seen people doing and just trying to make a quick buck and you're always going to get that. So I guess I just wanted to say just that's, watch that's out. the people that are flipping. Those wait, are people for, that are flipping. wait for all this testing and trialing and error to get out of the way and for all the people to get snapped out about all the dodgy stuff that they're doing and then wait for the official brands, wait for the people with a great reputation that aren't going to risk you know, their reputation by doing something dodgy or behind or, or, or something behind your back. Um, and call, that's, that's what I'm in. That's what they, I'm in. It is definitely coming. And it's called a rug pull. I look mate. forward to it. a rug pull. pull. Yep. Hey, look, awesome. non-financial advice. Leo can come on here and tell you how he's already lost like eight grand on rug pulls. <laughs> <laughs> but hey, I learned a lot. I learned a lot. And now I understand NFTs and I understand a little bit more about Web3, which, you know, people say it's just a phrase being thrown out there. But 
Anyway. It's coming. It's, it's coming. Anyway, that aside, NFTs, guys. NFTs, e-commerce is definitely there and it's coming more and more. Shopify sells NFTs. You know you're allowed I to sell do. NFTs just, through Shopify, right? I was right? just going to tell people about there it. So go. I know you've been getting involved in the Shopify ecosystem with the with the, with the developers that are mm-hmm. you know, earmarked to be working specifically just with Shopify and the NFT platform. Yep. So yep. you know, as we f- get more updates, we will definitely be filling you guys in on this. It'll um, become more normal. Absolutely. Like you'll be like, what's, and Leo what's will be the master of all the knowledge on this <laughs> after uh, a few of those. But you know, it's really, I'm really proud of you for actually embedding yourself there and making sure that people are aware, like, hey, we're interested because, um, you know, you got to try and be first. About I appreciate that, that you're Absolutely. proud of me losing my money and not your money yeah, through NFT. So I appreciate I just, that I get, comment. I still get the laugh out of it. So that's, that's, a, that's, <laughs> that's awesome. Um, but yeah, what else has happened? Look, no, season um, four, what, who are we going to get? Who are we going to get? You said, you said oh, that yeah, Rachel so, gave you a list of people. Who we got? Oh, we don't have a list, but we've earmarked a few people and okay. we want to hear from you guys about who you guys really want um, to get into this season. But some of the stuff that we got now is we know that video on a product page is extremely important, right? So uh, we've got a we've got a speaker coming on that's going to speak specifically about the power of video. Mm. Um, so really looking forward to that. We're definitely going to get a bunch of merchants on here. I've already reached out to a lot of them. So mm. we're just going to get some feedback um, and get, uh, get some agreement from them. You might even see Emily that you guys remember used to work for us. You mm. might even see her back on the podcast because she's now the marketing manager for About Face. So um, who, Emily, who, I about haven't told face? you about this yet. In case people don't know who oh, About, about face, face is. Well, if About Face is a, a, is a brand, an e-commerce brand. Well, they're not actually, they're, they're clinics. They're a uh, facial skincare clinic. That's yes. what I was looking for. There you go. Um, and they're quite a big brand. They've got nine clinics all around Auckland. It just feels like a free plug, but anyway, you're welcome. Um, <laughs> And you're then welcome, we Emily. built we built a website for them and helped them replatform uh, into the new world of e-commerce uh, around about sort of 2020. And then they um, stole Emily, but that's okay because now yeah, we have Rachel yeah. and Rachel's amazing. Oh yeah, so uh, you might even see that we've got uh, I've got a couple of other merchants that then just want to be at the forefront of things. So as mm. new things become available, um, we've got uh, Julian joining us from Shopify. We're actually recording that one later today. You guys will see that um, in, in the next week's episode. And um, yeah, a whole bunch of other stuff, plus the stuff you guys are going to tell us that you want. So really looking forward to that. But we won an award. Did we? We did. No, I knew that. I knew right. we did. Do you want to tell people about this award? Uh, well, actually, you know, if you brought your mic, Rachel would have been telling the story because, <laughs> you know, she was the one that was deeply involved in this. But uh Anyway, uh, yes, it's called the Web Awards. And Web I believe, Excellence. Web Excellence, thank you so much. And 900 plus entries had gone through uh, and we won two. And, uh, but the first one was for having a podcast in the science and technology and we smashed it, my friend. You awesome. are now, you and I and Rachel, are now part of an award-winning <laughs> podcast. How about that? Can you believe it? Only 50 episodes in. Were the judges <laughs> drunk or? Oh, well, I don't know. But now we need to like hit up Gary V and go, Can you, do you want to come on to an like, award-winning podcast? Come exactly. on. Um, what else has happened? Obviously, we all went on holiday and it was that sort of stuff, but kicked in straight into the new year. And one of the first things that we attended was the uh, Shopify Plus ANZ um, Partners mm. Chat. Yes. Done on that Reno platform. Yeah. Remember yeah. that? Yeah. For the others, for those of you that haven't heard of Reno, I think we mentioned it previously, but that's years ago. Um, Reno is a real modern <clears throat> conferencing platform that allows you to create multi-level conference rooms, floors, etc., yeah. all uh, virtually, which is freaking amazing. And yeah. uh, everybody starts sort of in the stage. And after the presentation is over, just like you would expect in a normal hall, uh, everyone gets, you don't actually you have to up. get off your seat That's and right. walk out to the back and try to, you know, duck and dive yeah, people just that you don't to want to talk to. <laughs> Unfortunately, there's no drinks, but you can always walk to the fridge. Yes. Um, but yeah, then you get to like have the opportunity to sit around tables, virtual tables, yeah. obviously with and, people. And you see the avatar of that person, right? You see the profile picture. Yeah. So you go, oh, well, those at that table. I'm going to go it's sit a little there. biography of them there as oh, well. So um, cool. yeah, the future of conferencing, guys, it's there. What um, does your I biography hope- say? Just e-commerce. Mr. Cool guy? E-commerce. E-commerce, e-commerce for life. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> the creativity is flowing. Right? E-commerce. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Okay. Um, so, and live cool. and breathe it. Mm. There's another one I've been to, th- these platforms, and the closer you get to the table, the more you can hear what people are talking about. That's so cool. Then, so then you don't have to join if you're like, oh, they're talking about some boring shit. I'll That's move over cool. here. That's pretty cool. One thing I found out the hard way in that Reno is there's on every floor, there's a small stage, like a mini stage. Oh, yeah. And if you actually go sit there, yeah. then it sort of notifies everyone else that, <gasps> hey, Waldo's here, wants to speak to the room. Let's do one. <laughs> One. Let's do one take over and we'll just start recording a podcast episode. Oh, let's not. Let's not. <laughs> oh, geez. But hey, yeah, this ANZ um, 
this uh, partners event was really good because obviously Shopify launched a whole bunch of new tech at the end of last year. We talk about flows, markets. What else was there, Leo? Don't don't, don't don't put me in. Like okay, that. right. Anyway, flows, new markets. There's um, new interfaces. You'll see that your settings within your Shopify is now completely different, um, and they've just simpli- simplified things a lot more around you know payment methods um, and, and and bringing all that into the fore. So oh, there's also like new Apple Apple and Google Pay checkouts for subscriptions and all Correct. that sort of thing. Yeah, so, that's big. That was big. That yeah. just came out recently. Yeah, but, so but, obviously they launched this stuff for the world um, and. Typical Shopify fashion, most of it was like available like straight away. Bang. And a couple of we things no that we notice. really wanted was maybe a little bit delayed, but it's all out now. So, um, you know, for those of you who do use flows, um, you will see that coming into advanced, we're going to have a lot of flow capabilities, um, which is really cool. Um, for those um, that always had some constraints in and around Shopify Plus and the monthly costs because it's all based on revenue needs to make sense, right? We're all about ROI here. So uh, for those of you that don't, you, you may be able to have flows and markets is the other one, which mm-hmm. will allow you to sell in different markets. So mm-hmm. I think what they did in typical, like I said, Shopify fashion is launched it, let everyone play, test around, figure out the the, the pitfalls and, and things that people I can't figure out. And then they have like a big partner event like they did for us here about a month or so ago. And... Um, had some had some of the Shopify devs there to answer the questions and just gave a bit of a more of an in-depth overview as to what to expect from all of those, how it's going to be rolled out, how it's going to evolve um, and why we should be talking to our customers about it, mm. which is why we should be talking to our audience on this podcast about it, right? We probably need an episode just on the markets. Oh, we will. Didn't the guy presenting markets drop the ball? Didn't really know anything, but... <laughs> Probably shouldn't say that. This guy. <laughs> anyway, but, um, but, hopefully but he's not. There. Hopefully he's not listening. But yeah. I think it's so fresh. I don't know if he dropped the ball so much. I just think it's so fresh that there's so many unknowns that they own, they're only going to be able to figure out once right, people start really good. using it and pushing it to its limits. Right. Yeah. Tristan, who um, is our partner manager for with Shopify Plus, um, he was on another podcast that I watched, which was really cool, and he had the best um, analogy or description of markets versus. Um, you know, multi multi store okay. on Shopify Plus. Um, Give me that answer. Hey, can you? Do you remember? Oh, I I can't no? word it as well okay. as he did. Okay. But essentially, it is if you are wanting to sell. In a nutshell, it is if you're distributing only from New Zealand, for example, into Australia, and you want to tap into maybe the US or Canada or somewhere wherever, um, you could trial it on markets. Right, yes. test the grounds. Yes. Don't commit to duplicating your store, paying all this money to get it all set up and just let's yeah. hope it works. <laughs> um, I just licked my finger and put it in the air, by the way, for those of you only listening. I got it from the sound. But, um, well, right. And um, so you use markets to then test it. Test it. Test it. Absolutely. Right? But hundred percent still, if you then blow up and you start getting distribution and fulfillment and everything in place within those countries, multi-store and Shopify Plus is still the way to go. Um, yeah, that, that's it in a nutshell. Really. That was a great answer. Cool, man. Thanks. <laughs> I do my research before these things, you know. Is, are you insinuating that I haven't? <laughs> oh, funny. What else? Um, I don't know. What else have you got for us, mate? I, um, I've i got a few things that, you know, just sort of happened in the last six weeks or so where obviously at the start of the year when um, – when marketers get into get into work, it's a little bit slow to kick off. So what they do is they have a look at what happened last year and they work on reports on trends to expect this year, um, all these sorts of things that you could you know, expect a marketer to do in January. And so a lot of the partners that we work with, like HubSpot, Shopify, Klaviyo, um, Gorgeous, you name it, they've all – Recharge actually as well. We should talk about Recharge. But but um, they've, um, they've all – release these reports about data and, and, and trends to expect. Um, and so what I want to do maybe is just for those of you that don't like reading, I can rattle off the top six for you quickly. Shall I do that? Do it. Sweet. Awesome. Do it. I haven't read so, it. Retail, so retail. Th- th- these, these are kind of aimed at retail because obviously we're coming out of a pandemic. Woohoo! Um, and sorry if I hurt someone's ears with that, but I am really stoked about it just quietly. I think, um, I think you and everybody oh, on this man, planet. I'll tell but, you, tell you um, there's, Oh, so what was I saying? <laughs> <laughs> You're talking about oh, right. These so a lot of these are aimed at uh, retail trends, right? Like e-commerce and retail are smashing together so much that they're just basically becoming the same thing. Okay, um, and so one of the things that marketers usually do, and what you as a merchant should be doing, is what do my customers want? Because mm. if I understand what my customers want, I understand how to communicate with them, Where what type are. of products, etc., yeah. etc. Et yeah. Right? Yeah. So. Yeah. Um, 
I'll bring up my laptop. You guys may know I've got a few more stickers. <laughs> that is terrible. <laughs> That's cool. Um, so retail trends for 2022, what consumers actually want? Consumers want more visual content. All right. I mean, it's a no oh, brainer. Shit. It's a no brainer, that's, right? That's a no brainer. And it's that's one of the like things that, that we've even noticed how much mm. more emphasis and people are quite finally understanding that content on your website, yes, it costs you money. Yes, it's important to have it good, like good quality. But the impact of that and the, the fact that you can use this on all your different channels is so powerful, mm. right? Mm. Um, so 30, 30% of people, this is just, I don't know how many people they surveyed for this, but 30% of people say that video is what they enjoy the most. Now I'm the same. I love video. Um, even if I'm just flicking through Instagram, I stop at videos. I stop at videos. sorry. Um, because you, it, it's sort of like, like anticipation. It's a dynamic movement that mm. you're seeing and getting it. Do you know, mm. you know where you're going with this? It's, I like to chime in. Yeah, please do. I bought the uh, I bought that um, <clears throat> like that fire burner smoker Traeger. You, you, oh, the you, Traeger, the Traeger. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They're, they're, they're so like, jealous. There's a pallet burner, by the way. Pallet burner. Mm. Oh, I'm so sorry. Yes, mm. yes, yes. I'm going to get shot by somebody by calling it a wood burner. Pallet mm. burner. Yeah. Um, yeah, Traeger. If you're listening, guys, yeah, more than happy to try yeah, one give, of those. Give one to Waldo, <laughs> and yeah. But look, what I'm going to say is the video is actually what made me go. I'm getting this now. It was. Aimed at men, yep. middle-aged men. Yep. The video is this like good looking dad bod guy, you know, outside on this very nice looking patio. You could tell he's got a bit of money. The garden looks amazing. He's got his hot wife there. And I was sitting there going, oh my gosh, this is me, which is totally isn't, but that's what I want to be. And I was like, I'm so into this product. And it was the video that sold me, even though I did a bit of research, I was like, no, nah, I'm going ahead. So yes, it. videos are important to get the sale they are. They sucked you in, and now it's quite. An, I've heard it's quite an expensive thing to run. Uh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Not as expensive as NFT. So, I'm oh okay. man, you double whammy. Um, <laughs> nice one. Yeah, I mean, I love barbecuing myself. You know, yes, Web, uh, I'm a big Weber Weber fan. Um, traditional, but yeah. So 30 percent of people say that video is what they enjoy the most, right? Yeah. Why? Some of the other benefits, not only from a user experience point of view, but it's amazing for SEO. Google has started putting video next to search results. Have mm. you seen that? I have. Yeah, crazy. Have. So now when you do a search for something, if there's if it's like slightly something that's to do with content and video marketing, if it's product, you see Google Shopping. Straight underneath that, you'll see those little snippets. Yes. Straight underneath that, you've got like, video content. Yeah. The poor guys who have done 15 years worth of SEO to be the first organic link is now like <laughs> not even on the page anymore. You know what I mean? Poor guys. Anyway, well, they have to they have to pivot. They've got to do some video content. Um I also, love it. I also love it how Google takes you directly to that part of the video that might be also answering your question. If you've done like a voice uh, search, yeah. it's like three minutes, 22, how to install this, this is how you do it. Like, oh, yeah. I'm right here, play. One thing I find Google is still pretty bad at though is like when you do something, especially if it's like a recent event and it's just like certain keywords, right? Um, it's, like, it's throwing me stuff from like 2017. Like this is the important that it's putting on video. I'm like, no, no, no. I want to know what happened on that topic like recently. Oh. Yet the video content from like on YouTube and stuff from like oh, 17, which is yeah. now outdated, is still featuring up the top Well, there. that so, guy's upset that you haven't clicked on his four-year-old video. He's like, come on, well, I've done all this work. Click on yeah, my video. Yeah, I'm sure they'll fix that. And, mm. you know, the more people use this, uh, the more it'll even out anyway. Um, yeah, so basically, I mean, that's video. So... First trend, consumers want more visual content. Okay. Makes sense. Done. So Two, they want more ethical brands. Yes. Now, one thing people always forget on Shopify is if you use ShopPay and mm. the app. Yes. Right? Yes. You are offsetting carbon emissions using that. You know? does, does the app still tell you how many trees you saved? Yep. Absolutely. Man, I got to go back into that app. I got to start 100%. shopping so, again. Yeah, I mean, if you guys haven't and you want to be able to, um, you know, for your brand, for your product, whatever it is, you want to be a little bit more ethical, bring that sustainability message into your website, activate shop pay. Mm. Settings, Boom. alternative payment, shop pay. I think there's a stat that you might have it there about millennials, mm. like a huge number are all into this. Like, no, we're millennials. Are we millennials? <laughs> Am I that young? Gen Z. Yeah, Gen Z. Gen oh, there Z. you go. There yeah. you go. I'm not as old as I thought. What is Gen Z? Is that like being born like after 2001? Or Rachel, look that up. <laughs> Rachel, look that up. I don't have these answers. Uh, anyway, yeah, 49% say that they would buy something from a brand after considering the positive impact. Okay? Yeah, there you go. So that's, that's pretty powerful, guys. Um, and, you know, we know the importance of 
being sustainable. We want we want our next generations to be able to enjoy this world just as much as we do. Um, man, Rachel is onto it. Look, she's popping up on my screen. Gen Z, 1997 to 2012. Oh, yeah. Right. Yeah, so it's those people who are kind of maturing into, you know, their early teens to early mm. 20s. Yeah. Kind of. Way, way 1997, me. man, I was in high school. <laughs> Those are the good days. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> um, uh, trend number three, customers are around four times, four times more loyal to eco-friendly businesses. Now, I've seen this firsthand with a um, with a toothbrush company called oh, Toothbrush. Yeah. Yes. And they do sustainable um, – what are those big trees that grow in China? <laughs> <laughs> Pass. The, Rachel, the pandas, one of the big trees. Pandas love the bamboo. Bam, oh, bam- bamboo. Bamboo toothbrushes. They love- pa- I yes, never it, considered bamboo as a tree, I guess. Of course it's I just, a tree. I just look at it and go, that's it bamboo. It has a base with leaves. Um, anyway, so- Apparently it's really hard. Like once it starts growing, you're fudged. Yeah, like, yeah. yeah, yeah. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. Um, yeah, so bamboo toothbrushes and people love it, right? right. It's Because um, you don't feel as bad throwing it in the bin as mm. what you do with like, I just get like little replacements for the old- yeah, electric one. Yeah, yeah. Um, but if they were made bamboo ones, I would pay, I would buy them. Promise yeah. you. And they're probably a little bit more expensive. Yes, but, but you you're know doing what? Some, you're doing something it. good. You're doing good. Yep. Doing good. Fair enough. Um, so yeah, if you can bring that sustainability, eco-friendly, um, ethical brand, where's your product sourced from? What journey does it take to get to the customer? Think about that entire process. And it's right? a great story to tell throughout the home page, or if they want to dive deeper yep. onto a you know an inner page. And people love that stuff, as you yep. mentioned. The percentages are there. Yep, absolutely. And just don't just do it because you know it's going to make you look good. Do it yeah. because you believe. You got to believe in it. Well. In it eh? You got to really believe in it. Yeah, hundred uh, percent. Uh, trend number four: Consumers want more educational content and courses. So fifty-eight yeah. percent yeah. say they would like to take a free course created by a brand. Now, I'm not one of those people. I'm part of the 48, 42% that doesn't, but I can see where it's come from, right? Like, uh, got anything to say about training courses? Because I don't do many of those. Oh, look, I, I don't know about going deep into like doing, you know, 10 in a row, but I do know that I am constantly searching for how to do something on YouTube. And then I start following that influencer who may have a brand and then I'm all, I'm like, I'm going to support you because you put the time and effort to educate me on this. So I'll proceed with the product that you've got that does what I actually need. So yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. One of the websites that we actually at Zyba just put live recently uh, built on OS 2.0 super fast is for Hammer Hardware. So Hammer Hardware was acquired by Mitre 10 not so long ago. And so Mitre 10 did a massive overhaul of their entire website. And one of the things that they spent thousands if not hundreds of thousands of dollars on are these tutorial how to do it at home. Mm. Don't get a chip in, don't get a trade in, mm. don't da, 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 da. watch this video. We've got all the products You're here. You're talking about the Mitre 10 videos or? Yeah, the- Mitre 10 videos. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 yeah they've They're done amazing. a really good job they of that. They are going. amazing. Yeah. You know, if you go onto a collection page now, for example, at the top it's featuring like three or four videos about the stuff in that collection and they've, mm-hmm. they've synced it so well. Yeah. Uh, not on Shopify, it's, just, it's you know, it's a it's a huge beast, but the Mitre Ten one, the yeah. Mitre Ten one, yeah. yeah. But uh, Hammer Hardware is just as good. Go check it out if you want to see a live working OS two point site, non transactional at the moment. But uh, yeah, maybe um, at some point. I was just gonna say it's really clever marketing by Mitre Ten with those videos Man. because it, it has made everyone go, okay, I'll go and do it and buy the product, and then probably can't, and then they actually get a proper trader to do it. Yeah, but I but believe anyway. like uh, well, one of the things that the the guys at the support Mitre Ten support said to me is they didn't actually even anticipate. When they originally did them, the production value wasn't that much, et yes, cetera. It was yes. kind of an idea. Yeah, just, yeah of just, course. Just try it. And when they saw the amount of people that are watching it, like, yeah. it is wild. Now, if you've seen Mitre 10's um, adverts on TV. They're using the same guy. So it's the guy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then he's, he, he makes this like best friend, like they're almost like this yeah. relationship bond in I've house. Seen that. I've and seen everything. that video. It's amazing. Yeah. I love it. It's yeah. so cool. <laughs> Um, so as much educational content you can, courses, explainer videos on your product, how to use it, um, all that sort of stuff. You'll, you'll know if you, it's appropriate to you and uh, start thinking about what your customers want to see and then start making content for it. Content's great because you do it once and it's there for life, right? Until you can it always iterate outdated, on it. But, but yes. Yeah, exactly. Um, trend five, voice and visual search. Wow. Oh, pff, we've if, already talked about this right. one. This is two years old. No, no. Who put this list together? <laughs> is this Shopify? It's a bit of a combo of Shopify. Oh. Well. Yeah. VSO. 
But yes. we're starting to see the impact of oh. VSO yes. with SEO. And yes. we already mentioned more some of them earlier, snippets. Um, you know, if you're creating video content and you're actually adding those snippets mm-hmm. like you would with like alt text. Yes. Um, yeah, man, there you go. It's, it's in. So if you think that you can do a video explainer on your website or if you can have video on a product page, if you can do a 360 of your product on a video, these things are becoming so cheap. A lot of it you can do on your phone now. I know you've got a Samsung. You're a bit of a fan there. That thing's got some incredible 3D to, like capabilities to be able to do with products. Are you jealous? So, you want to come over to Samsung? No, not at okay. all. But um, <laughs> but just wondering. I guess what I'm trying to say is, you know what? It's not going to hurt to try it yourself. So go for it. Um, and then AI and AR will lead the way. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Tell us Definitely. why. Well, artificial intelligence. I mean, we even had some people on the show last season, you know, to explain how you can upsell. And I can guarantee you, in this season, you will hear more about it. You will hear more about it. And AR, I've been a big fan of that for years, um, and VR. And uh, Shopify have that example of that baby trolley. The, yep. what Stroller. Are we Stroller. Mm-hmm. I should know this. I have yeah. a kid now. So stalk, stalk.io, I think it is. Uh, yeah, that's, that's exactly it. Jump and on there. The way they show it is such a clever way. Parents want to know, is there enough room in the boot of the car? And so using augmented reality through their phone, they can see if it does fit in the boot of their car without the physical product. Yeah, awesome. So before they buy it, they go, yeah, it works. Okay, buy now. Yeah, so Javianas, have you seen them? So they brought <laughs> AR in on, your, on the jandals, on your feet. And I can do yeah. it? Yeah, and just put Ooh. the camera at your feet, swap the red one, get a blue one, and this What'd one. What do you call it? Javianas? Have you have Are they not Havanas? <laughs> no, nah, bro. Are they not? <laughs> Javianas, all right. Javianas, yeah. All right, cool. Um, awesome. Just checking. Yeah, <laughs> and there's many different websites that are considering it, watch brands, sunglass brands. Yes. I think Ray-Bans has got it as well yes. now. I may be wrong, but go and check it out. Um, yeah, so that's, that's pretty much that. We man. should talk to G-Shock, eh? And so we could just see it on our wrist. Yeah, let's do it. 100%. Go for it. Um, so I guess those were kind of six trends that we pulled from. Geez, I'm telling you, what was that Shopify report? 130 pages or something? Yeah. Uh, Rachel, what was the name of that book? Future, Future of, of Commerce, Commerce 2022 yep, and beyond. 139 pages. Yep. I read it a couple of weeks ago. Actually, I read it when I was locked up in my room, thanks to Waldo. Yeah. Uh, and so yeah. Said, yeah, thanks. Like he did. You know, this is a little bit of a synopsis of that. Yeah. Um, and I think maybe we could do an episode on it, maybe not, <laughs> but it's a lot of pages. But um, give me the six bullet points there. What were the six trends? Consumers want more visual content. Yes. They want more ethical brands. Of course. Uh, customers are f- around four times more loyal to eco-friendly businesses. Yes. Consumers want more educational content and courses or resources. Voice and visual search are becoming more important. I would say if we probably have this conversation in two or three years, voice, it will read voice and visual search is now the norm. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, good point. And then AI and AR, we know this. Artificial intelligence, you didn't really touch on too much there, but just to add to that, we recently caught up with, uh, and they're going to be on the, are they going to be on the podcast? The, um, Who are you oh, talking about? Search Spring? You can say their name. Sure, why not? Um we spoke to them about some of the stuff that they're bringing in and, and you know, you've got the Nostos, the Search Springs, the Clayvoos, all of those companies. Um, and they specialized in merchandising and then AI and those two worlds started merging together. And now mm-hmm. the people who specialized in AI are tapping into the whole merchandising and making search optimal, et cetera. And those who are just focusing on search and merchandising, they want to get this AI tech in place now. So like, it's just good for you guys because at the end of the day, more competition in that space brings the price down. Traditionally, those things cost like another $2,000 or euros per month. Um, it's coming down. I've seen it drop dramatically. So uh, just watch the space. And if you can make it easier for your customers to find what they're looking for, well, of course, they're going to be more likely to buy. So there you go. Mm-hmm. That, that's the the whole, that's, that's e-commerce right there. That's it. Uh, the e-commerce. only other notes I had from <laughs> uh, users spend 15% of their waking life on social media. Yeah. What? That's yeah. crazy. That's yeah. so scary. Yeah. 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 Right? That was it. That was some good stats. There's just a couple of things for you guys to think, and we'll try to wrap a lot of content around it this season to uh, fill in the gaps there, but that's a high-level overview. Um, yeah, so I guess that's pretty much us for this week, guys. Um, give us your feedback. What are your thoughts on the new studio? Do you like it? Do you not like it? Um, what topics, Rachel wants to know, what topics do you guys want to hear, not only this season but for the rest of the year? We're going to be pumping out episodes every week 
and uh, really looking forward to, yeah, just being back in your guys' lives. Yeah, and I want to say thanks to Walda for doing all the research for this episode. Since I just sat here and just nodded, it was fantastic, actually. I quite enjoyed it. Can we keep doing that? Sure, no worries. <laughs> we'll just make it a one-band bad no, one awesome. show, but uh, no one will listen to it then. No, no, no. Rachel, <laughs> we'll get your microphone for uh, next week so that you can actually have some input. Waldo, she's, awesome she's to be back. Like this guy. She's episode 51 up. is in the bag. Looking yep. forward to Julian coming on next. And yep. uh, stay tuned, mate. This is the shit right here. Hell yeah. See you next week, guys. On that note, bye. I am Alexandria Collis, Director of Customer Experience for Princess Polly. I'm focused on our strategy and innovation in the CX department here at Princess Polly. I have a quote and I always tell our CX leaders that customer experience is the heart of an organization and we pump the blood and deliver the oxygen to the vital organs in the business to help them thrive and grow stronger. The gorgeous platform allows our agents a seamless place to just do it all. We are really there for the customer every step of the way if they want. Our customers expect quality and efficiency where they are. So the real question is, how do you get quality and efficiency across every single platform? And then once you have it, how do you maintain it? And I believe that with the Gorgeous platform, we can do that. If you're interested in learning more about Gorgeous, go to gorgeous.com and mention podcast for two months free. Ooh.